Raising the minimum wage won't force corporate America to pay more. If large corporations aren't already raising their wage, they'll simply pass that cost on to consumers. Companies, companies are not allowed to fix prices. Likewise, government should not be allowed to fix wages. I believe in the free market. If you want to kill opportunities for people who are entering for the first time or re-entering after a pause, the workforce, by all means, vote for House Bill 1500. Mr. Speaker, this bill, if passed, will deny young people the opportunity to get those entry-level jobs. More companies will just shift to AI. We were already seeing it at McDonald's where you go in and you punch a screen to order food instead of actually somebody being behind a counter. I don't know about you, Madam Speaker, but I know I go out to eat a whole lot less now than I did a few years ago because the cost, thanks to the president's administration's inflation, has either doubled or tripled at my favorite restaurants. And that means these folks are earning fewer tips from me their usual customer. This bill is only going to result in the cost of playing miniature golf to rise. Raising the minimum wage won't force corporate America to pay more. If large corporations aren't already raising their wage, they'll simply pass that cost on to consumers. Can we accept anything lower than what is being proposed here today? Never. It has taken us 14 years to get to this point, and we will continue to champion this issue year after year to come. No jobs will be lost, as our counterparts will have you to believe. More jobs will be created. Good, sustainable, living wage jobs will be created, not the slave wages offered today. Rising tides will lift all boats. Today, we will lift all boats for low-wage workers. I urge my colleagues to vote yes. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's been since 2009, 14 years, since our $7.25 minimum rate wage has been raised in this great state. The cost of living in both counties, in Luzerne and Lackawanna, is $15.16. That's for a single individual, not a family, a single individual to earn a decent living wage. I think it's time we support those people. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Maria Antoinette, if she was still alive, would have loved so much of this debate because a lot of it really sums up as just let them eat cake. Who cares about the struggling workers who are at home right now who are really only asking one question? Why has it taken us this long? Why has it taken us this long? So many of the arguments that you've heard today, they are difficult to decipher because in my opinion, Mr. Speaker, they don't make a lot of sense. So in one breath, you've heard, Mr. Speaker, from previous speakers that nobody pays the minimum wage. We know that right now, we're in a position to do what has not been done in this body. And today you're hearing from the minority party all the things that we could do in lieu of raising the minimum wage that could help low-wage workers. You had over a decade, why didn't you do it? Why didn't you do it? But now when we're bringing up an actual solution, you have all the part-time economists who want to come in and tell us what this is going to do for our economy. What this is going to do, plain and simple, is to say that every job has a level of dignity, and that dignity should be reflected in the paycheck. That dignity should be reflected in the paycheck. And I want to make one final point, Mr. Speaker, when we talk about the economy. The economy is not this amorphous thing that we are just supposed to be here at the altar of. The economy is people. The economy that we're talking about is people. People who right now, too often than not, don't even have enough savings to cover an accident on their car or a medical expense should it happen. People who've had to work more than one job because 725 is not nearly enough. People who are sick and tired of politicians promising to do something and never delivering. 
Well, guess what? House Democrats are delivering. I urge a yes vote. Mr. Speaker, I'm not an economist. Um, and so I come at this as a former minimum wage worker and a former business owner. When I was 13 years old, I went to work at the only job that was available to me because it was the only business that was within a bicycle's ride of my house in rural Lancaster County. And I started washing dishes in a restaurant for minimum wage. And by the end of the summer, when the cook quit, the boss said to me, hey, you've been helping out when we get busy. You're now the cook. And so at age 13, and I don't even know what the child labor laws were then, but you know, at age 13, I started cooking in a restaurant. And I got a whopping 10 cent an hour raise. And guess what? I was no longer making minimum wage. I was making all of a buck 15 an hour, I think it was at the time. So when we get those statistics that there's only 63,000 minimum wage workers, that's probably true. But how many are there at minimum wage plus 10 cents an hour, or minimum wage plus 20 cents an hour, or minimum wage plus a buck an hour, or minimum wage plus $2 an hour? None of those statistics were presented today. I wasn't working because it was nice, easy change on the side so I could go buy candy or sodas. I was working so that I didn't have a student debt that was astronomical when I graduated from college. I was working so that I could put money in a savings account at $30 a week so that I could help pay for my college five years later. It wasn't about, this is just a fun thing to do for me on the side. It was about, this is the difference between me going to college or not. We're talking about paying people a wage that we're not even talking about a living wage. We're just talking about something that's remotely close to reasonable. Mr. Speaker, this bill is long overdue. The COLA in it, the, the escalator, the cost escalator every year is long overdue. And this will move Pennsylvania forward in a manner that provides dignity for people who are willing to work. For people who are willing to work.